The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus called the, the twelve to him and sent them out with the following instructions. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, but those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of the prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of the righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Sandy. I mentioned that we're going to address the uh, Gospel a little bit today. And then a little P.S. at the end. I'm going to tell you a word that you're going to hear more than two or three times in my remarks. The word is recognizable. You know what it means. This is recognizable as green. He is recognizable as a man. She is recognizable as a woman. This is recognizable as a church. This is not a tavern or a bank. It's a church. That's all I mean. Nothing fancy. What I want to say about this passage, it's from the speech in Matthew's Gospel that people call the mission speech. You know there are five famous speeches in Matthew's Gospel. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is the most famous. This is from the mission speech, and, and that's the feel I want to communicate. Jesus is giving instructions to those who are going to go out and teach and preach, and what they are supposed to go out and teach and preach is things like this. Whoever does not take up his or her cross uh, is not worthy of me. Now that's pretty strong marching orders. I want to stress a little later, let's say Jesus said this around 30 AD, Matthew wrote this about 85 AD, so from his vantage point, these were not instructions for people that Jesus were talking to. It was instructions for people who wanted to be followers of Jesus. Uh, after Jesus was gone, we, we can relate to that more because we are people who want to relate to Jesus after he is gone. And Matthew has us in mind, so not only are these instructions that Jesus gives to the disciples who are going to go to the villages, Matthew gives the same instructions to us. You want to be a follower of Jesus? This is part of my mission. I have to tell you things like this. Whoever does not take up his or her cross is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his or her life is going to lose it, but those who give it up will find it, and so on. My, my. Recognizable. This is the one principle about life that I'd like to extract from the mission sermon. We are to be recognizable as followers of Jesus. We do this all of the time. We recognize things and recognize what who said this or the background of the person who did this. For instance, you can hear some, somebody say something and you say that's that comes from a young person. That, that's, that's the take that young people have on our society today. Or, this is the take of somebody who is 
a lot older. Or you can read something sometimes and say, this, this reflects a parent. This was written by a parent. This is stuff that only parents really, really get. Recognizable. Or I know from working in, with the black community for a long time, there are some things that white folks say which black folk would never say. And there are some things that black folks say that white folks would never say. It's recognizable. And I'm not passing judgment on any of these. It's just recognizable. You alluded to flaming Democrats. <laughs> After church, tell me the difference between a Democrat and a flaming Democrat. <laughs> but you can hear something, and you, you don't know this person, but you'd say he's a Democrat. Or he's a Republican. Right? By the way, detour. God is not a Republican and God is not a Democrat. God is God. Back to our sermon. Now, if we can recognize that this is from a young person, this is from a black person, this is from a Democrat or a Republican, and on and on we could go, I don't think it's asking too much that we should be recognizable as baptized Christians. People ought to be able to watch us or hear us and recognize this is a Christian. This is a baptized person. That's the, the rule of life that I'm extracting from the mission sermon of Jesus today. I, I do not mean to imply, by the way, that we are categorically better than people who are not baptized Christians. They put us to shame at times, you know that. But I am saying that we should so conduct ourselves in what we do or don't do, our involvements, how we vote, what we say, how we treat people, that people say, you know, somehow or other, this is coming from the fact that this person is baptized. There's a goodness that rings true here. It's recognizable. That's what I want to say. When is the last time you watched someone or somebody watched you and said, hmm, that's a Christian. That person's been baptized. I can tell. I don't want to dwell on the negative here. Aren't we in trouble? if we look exactly the same as people who have no religious commitment, whatever, aren't we in trouble? Aren't we in trouble if we look no different from people who never go to church and do not gather around the word weekend after weekend? I think that we're in trouble. But let's pay, say it positively. We ought to be recognizable. Come with me to Jesus. Jesus is here. You have heard it said that God used the flesh and blood of Jesus to be present in the, on the earth for a generation or a generation and a half? Was Jesus recognizable as different in some ways? In some ways, totally like us in every way except sin. But in other ways, oh my, he stood out. He stood out in some of the things he did and some of the things he didn't do. Some of the things he said and some of the things he didn't say, his commitments, his priorities, he stood out from the crowd. That's why he got kneeled on a cross instead of some other folks, by the way. Those who do not take up their cross. Now, here's my syllogism. Here's my logic. God used the flesh and blood of Jesus, and he was very noticeable. He was recognizable. We say until we're sick of saying it that we are now the body of Christ. Now God wants to use our flesh and blood to be present in society. Ought we not to be recognizable somehow similar to how Jesus was recognizable? That's the value I hold up today. It's a compliment to our commitment if we are recognizable that this is what's making us tick. Does not mean we're all going to think the same when we apply our baptism to real questions. I don't care if we're talking about the George Floyd phenomenon. I don't care if we're talking about the way we deal with the pandemic. 
I don't care if we talk about the police and all, all of that whole thing, you know, all of the goodness that they represent and the problem, whatever the issue is we're talking about, inequality in society, you name it. This homily is not about any of those. This homily is about are we recognizable as Christians, as baptized people, when we enter those forums? That's what I'm saying. Recognizable. Recognizable. I said at the beginning that at the end I wanted to make a remark about preaching. This is what I want to say. There are all types of preaching. One of them appeals mostly to emotions. We've got to get better at this. Let's go. We can do this. Rah, rah, rah. Others target mostly our understanding of things, our knowledge, our evaluations of things. By temperament and by conviction, I don't do a lot of rah, rah, rah. I'm not made that way, but also, I know from experience, mine and others, that enthusiasm that goes up fast comes down fast. But in any case, this homily today is not meant to be mainly an appeal to our emotions. It's meant to be mainly an appeal to our understanding, to our, to our intelligence, to the basic building stones of what it means to be baptized. One of the basic things that we need to understand that, that, that gets into our gut and into our mind and into our style is we need to be recognizable as Christians. That's part of the intellectual understanding that I would like to propagate today. Now you're going to know why I began with that allusion to Dorothy Day. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we get so invested in this, we truly understand that it's part of who we are, so that when we die, someone will come to the microphone and say at our funeral, he, she, lived as though believing the gospel to be true.